Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of our Raw Reaction series and specifically the Arsenal Transfer Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. Keeping you up to date with everything that's going on in the world of Arsenal. And we have made it. Pre-season officially starts today, hence the shirt. Um, and of course, the the obligatory beard that apparently every Arsenal uh, player now has to try and grow uh, to be an Arsenal player at this stage, which is ridiculous. But so many of our uh, players have taken it on. So, you know, let's let's try it ourselves. We've got to get part of the team. It's how you support. <laughs> Very strange indeed. Good morning, everybody in the chat box. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Matt G, Ian, Simon, Chris, uh, Black Shine. Hope you're doing good, mate. Jose, Temi, Dave, Paul. FW, Mike, uh, Damien, Anthony, Connor, uh, Stevie, uh, we've got Trag and Stephen and SW and Patrick and Martin and Keith. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, Mark, happy Friday and to the TGT family as well. Uh, thank you so much, Harvey. Absolutely. Hit the like button. Subscribe. We're very, very close. I think we can do it today. I think we can hit 35,000 subscribers today. I'm going to be live at 8 p.m. tonight reacting of course, to the game against Nuremberg, which takes place this evening. More about that in a second. But I'm pretty sure we can probably hit the magic 35,000 number. So if you aren't subscribed, and I know that around 50% of you that watch this aren't, because YouTube tells me uh, it takes you one press of a button and it really does help show the support to the channel. And if you are already subscribed, you can still support even more by dropping a like. And if you want to go even further, go into the link tree in the description and become a member, help support the channel, join an amazing community of people in our Discord server and just have an all-round great time. Trust me, you want to be in that game time channel during the games this season. It pops off in there. It's definitely worth being part of. Let's uh, talk even more about subscribers because a quick thing before I go into the news. Sorry, you're going to have to bear with me while I waffle for a minute. Um, but the Arsenal way hit 20,000 subscribers uh, yesterday. We started this channel all the way back in August of last year. So we've managed to do this in less than a space of a year. I say we because it is a, a team of people, myself, Chris, Bailey, Umar, uh, Guy, of course, previously, Hush, who's recently moved on. Uh, we've got people like Alfie and Charlie that have uh, have joined us in, in this journey as well. Uh, Gina, of course, who was a big part of the uh, the branding and and uh, and the imagery and stuff like that. It's been amazing the the work that's gone into this. Plus, uh, help from people like Kaya Karnak, of course, as well, who comes on very regularly with us uh, to provide lots of journalistic insight uh, and loads of special guests and interviews as well. Amazing, um, amazing things have, have happened there. The big thing for me, you know, is that I took over TGT from Craig, who does the same old Arsenal all the way back in 2015. And we were on about seven, 8,000 subscribers when that happened. And of course, it's amazing taking the channel and, and, and building it and, and creating this community here. And we're nearly at 35,000 subs. But the Arsenal way is special for me because with the guys there, we started this from nothing and we've built it up in less than a year to 20,000 subs. Uh, and a, an amazing community of people that join us in the videos there. We're getting crazy views on some of the videos. It's, it's madness. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for the continued support on both channels. Um, but don't worry, nothing is happening with TGT. I'm always going to be here. It's always going to continue. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'll be live over there as usual at 10 a.m. And we'll have a match reaction to the Nuremberg game as well. Speaking of which... Uh, Arsenal have, of course, as we know, travelled to Germany to face Nuremberg uh, FC or CN, as it's seen, or FC Nuremberg, I believe. Um, and uh, yes, we play that game today at 4.30 UK time. If you want to watch the game, the game is being streamed on Arsenal.com, but you do have to pay for it. I believe it's £5.99p. Um, and if you're a member, I don't think that grants you any kind of special access. You will have to still pay for it, I think. I might be wrong. I think you still have to pay for it. Um I'm really uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing some exciting, you know, uh, players. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Marquinhos. I'm looking forward to seeing Matt Turner. Of course, Gabriel Jesus is the big one. Uh, and maybe some other surprises as well. Uh, coverage of the game will start over on uh, football.london at half past 12. I'll be running the live blog uh, over there. So if you aren't able to watch the game, but you want to keep up with the score and you don't know where to find it, go over to the football.london website from 12.30 p.m. Uh, 
p.m. UK time. We'll be running a live uh, minute by minute coverage of the game. And also I'm going to be doing what I did last season on the blog when I was running it and getting lots of videos and reactions from you guys. So if you want to send in your videos, tweet them, hashtag FL Arsenal, and I will get your views and reactions to the game uh, into the, the blog. So it's a great way to get involved and uh, I'll tweet more information out about it later. Let's uh, crack on with the stories, though, and we start with Fabio Vieira uh, has officially, uh, as we've seen here, joined up with the squad. He could be involved today. He was suffering with that minor injury, so I wouldn't expect him to play loads if he does, but he has joined up with the club uh, in Germany, and uh, yeah, fantastic to see our new signing involved. Uh, Karl Hein, uh, the goalkeeper, has also arrived in Germany and will be part of the team. Uh, it's expected that Karl Hein will probably become Arsenal's third choice goalkeeper next season with Arthur Okonko expected to leave the club on loan. Uh, Karl Hein spent some time, I believe it was with Reading last season and Okonko, it's now his turn to go out on loan this season while Hein becomes the third choice and probably the uh, the League Cup goalkeeper maybe in some fixtures. Uh, now, every single day, I feel like I'm bringing new updates around the Arsenal Academy and the new players that are signing their professional contracts. And I have to bring you another one today. Henry Jeffcott uh, has signed uh, his first professional contract with the club, as you can see here. Massive congratulations to him and all of the other players that are. Uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, Arsenal are running a behind the scenes documentary that will be coming out soon on the Arsenal Academy definitely going to be worth a watch that one. Uh, now, Alex Kirk has joined Air United on loan for the rest of the season. He's an exciting young centre-back at the club, uh, has actually made the Arsenal senior bench a couple of times. It's time for him to go out on loan. Arsenal have got lots of plans um, to try and find ways in which they can experience these players or get experience for these players elsewhere. And Alex Kirk is, is said to be a highly rated defender at this stage. So very, very interesting what might happen with him. Uh, Air United on loan next season. Uh, continuing forwards, uh, as we brought you, Charles Sago Jr. did sign a professional contract with the club, and we talked about that yesterday. A really good inter interview with him came out talking about Mertesaka and even talking about Mikel Arteta and kind of the influence that he has on the academy as well. Not one to skimp on the Arsenal website. But Leno is edging ever, ever, ever closer to a move to Fulham. According to the latest reports, he has agreed terms with the Premier League side. And Arsenal will be looking for around 10 to £11 million uh, in order to agree this contract. So Arsenal might be getting a small, I say small, 10 to £11 million pounds is probably more than I thought we were going to get uh, for Bernd Leno with a year left on his contract. So he looks like he's going to be off and playing against Arsenal next season for Fulham. Now, the Rafinha story. Yes, we're not done with the Rafinha story because Nazaire Kinsella, uh, formerly of goal, now of the evening standard, uh, focusing on Chelsea, has reported that supposedly Arsenal still haven't given up. Yes, that's right. We are going to continue to bring you Rafinha updates um, because according to these reports coming out from the evening standard, Arsenal have not given up. Now, don't get your hopes up. We report on all the news that we can find I didn't want to ignore this, but just don't get your hopes up. All I'm saying is that I want to be clear with the stories, but I also want to be clear with reality. Um, and I don't want you guys to get all your hopes up again about that. And uh, But there was a story from the Evening Standard saying Arsenal have not given up. Uh, and of course, if Arsenal are not to get Rafinha, which looks the likely scenario, Edon Zagrova has emerged as a key target. And according to reports coming out from France, whilst the player is said to be keen on a potential move, Lille have said he is not for sale. Um, they believe he is a player that can become a world-class talent and he's only been at the club for six months. They want to have him for next season. They want him to be developed so they can make even more money on, on him, of course, in a year's time. Arsenal have identified this player as something special. And if you want to find out why they have, you can go and watch our tactical breakdown on Edon Zagrova that came out yesterday. If you're watching this on playback, I'll make sure there's a little thing in the top right-hand corner of your screen um, to go and watch it. But uh, that is the last upload on the channel before this show. Uh, and you can go and find out all about him and actually how he outcompetes Rafinha, Saka and Asensio in plenty of different metrics. Uh, it's very interesting indeed. It's quite how talented this guy is. Uh, now, moving into some of our headline stories, Yuri Tielemans, uh, the latest on Yuri Tielemans, continues to be that a bid is supposedly being prepared. 
Uh, there has not um, been a bid as of yet still. Despite reports, it is our understanding that there has not been a bid made for Telemann still, but it is something that is kind of at this stage expected to happen. Uh, we obviously brought you the news with Sasha Tavalieri that he was not the priority target and Arsenal had someone. We are unaware of who that target is. It could be in a number of players. Ruben Neves, Sergei Milinkovic, Savage have been mentioned. It could be someone that has never, ever been talked about. But whilst that deal supposedly struggles for Arsenal, Yuri Tielemans is emerging more so as the player, it seems, more likely to end up at the club. He's very open to the move, as we all know. Um, but that is the latest right now. Hopefully, we can bring you some positive news over the weekend about a potential deal for the player. I hope so. And our main and headline story of the day is Lissandro Martinez. Now, for the first time in some time, we have some genuine new information about this. Or do we? The reason why I say that, I'll come on to in a second. But according to reports coming out of Argentina, Manchester United are the favoured target for the player. However, and this is crucial because, as I always say, it's always important to cross-reference your sources and to make sure that you have uh, all the information from other areas. And according to both Sam Dean at The Telegraph and Fabrizio Romano, Lissandra Martinez is supposedly yet to make that decision. And so despite all of the uh, baying crowd of United fans that are having a right laugh right now, as of yet, they may want to hold their laughs because it's not supposedly over. Both Arsenal and United are yet to agree a fee. There was a report coming out from the Netherlands that United had matched the €50 million Euro asking price. We will wait to see if Arsenal, of course, uh, match that figure as well. That's been the key thing for Arsenal, uh, is that Arsenal haven't yet matched that figure that Ajax want. We'll have to wait and see. Um, for a lot of people, I assume that they probably feel this one is probably done for Arsenal, which is fair enough. Um, and I hope that what we see uh, is a big switch because I would love to obviously see Lissandro Martinez at Arsenal. Um, we'll wait and see if indeed that does happen. But at this stage, from my personal point of view, I do think that there is more likely that he arrives at Man United this summer. But uh, for those that want to hold out hope, and I don't blame you, Plenty of reports coming out this morning that there is no preference yet and he has not made his choice about which club he will join. And for those Man United fans that are laughing in the chat box, I would have a quick look at the state of your club before you laugh at Arsenal. Anyway, uh, if we do not end up signing Lissandro Martinez, it of course does mean we may move on to an alternative. And reports coming out from the record in Portugal claim that as of this week, Arsenal may close in on a potential bid for uh, Grimaldo, the Benfica left back. Now, as we know, Lissandro Martinez um, is a player, of course, that we thought, or the Athletic reported, uh, was being used more as a left back by Mikel Arteta. And so it makes sense that, therefore, Arsenal's alternative to Lissandro Martinez would be a left back, um, because that's how they saw Lissandro Martinez as a player at Arsenal. And so Grimaldo is said to be that player. And to be honest, at the price that he's available for, which is supposedly around seven to eight million euros, it's not it's not a pricey deal. It's not a risky deal for Arsenal. Uh, and I do look forward to seeing more from him when I do a tactical breakdown, if indeed these links do persist, because I know that a lot of people have their doubts and worries about this player. It's certainly worth doing a lot more because I know that people like to build up an opinion on a player without hardly ever watching them play. So it's certainly important that we do our due diligence with Arsenal's targets, just like we did um, with Zagrova. And uh, yeah, I, I think that it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm just, sorry, I'm just laughing at the patheticness of some of the United fans in the chat box. Um, I do think it's a player that we don't know much about and we need to do our due diligence on learning about as well. Let's um, wrap things up there and we'll go to the chat box and your questions in the second part of today's show. Uh, without further ado, let's jump in. And after this short break, we'll be taking uh, as many of your questions as we feasibly can. Okay, if you do indeed have any questions you'd like to throw into the chat box, then please make sure you do. Uh, let's scroll up and um, <laughs> try and break fast all the, all the trolls that are in the chat box this morning. Amazing, isn't it, how they can take the time out of an early morning on a on a Friday to make time to troll a chat box. Crazy. 
Um, let's go to Michael. He says, I feel that the Martinez and Rafinha news is more PR for the club so they can distract the majority of the fan base, making them believe they are trying instead of moving on and bringing players in. As always, I think this is, with respect, rubbish. I don't think that there is um, PR from the club at all with these types of links. Arsenal have been trying to sign Rafinha. Arsenal have been trying to sign uh, Lissandra Martinez. They gain absolutely nothing from distracting the fan base um, with the types of links. And as we know from the Fabio Vieira deal, lots of things go on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Um, and so therefore, uh, to say that these are PR stunts, I do think is a little bit of a strange one. Um, let's go to Sean, who says, do you think Leicester are playing hardball and wanting to delay the Tielemans from coming? No, I don't necessarily think so, Sean. I think if Arsenal bid £30 million, they'll get their man. They just haven't bid for the player yet. The reason behind that, supposedly, uh, it's you know it, it's the situation where we're looking potentially at another target. Um, and that's why we haven't yet bid for, for Tillemans, because there's this other player uh, that Arsenal have been looking at. The Robots will let you says, of course it's PR, just like trying to sign Vlaovic. Again, the amount of people that bought into the idea that Vlaovic was a PR stunt is... You know, beyond me, Arsenal for a long time spent time trying to convince the players' party to be open to the move. They never put a bid in for the player because they never managed to convince the player to choose Arsenal. Instead, they end up going and get Gabriel Jesus. I mean, look, if it makes you feel better, if the conspiracies make you feel better, that's down to you. I'm not going to be one to certainly buy into them. That's for sure. Um, Mel says, what type of player is Grimaldo? I need personally to do my more research. I'm not going to sit like some do and just plaster an opinion about a player uh, all over social media without having watched him. So I'm going to, Mel, I'm going to ask you to be patient. I'm going to wait. I'm going to do some research on the player probably today uh, for FL and uh, and get back to you on that one. Uh, Bradley says, Leno for 10 million. He's a Premier League goalie. Fulham are robbing us. Uh, he's got one year left on his deal. He's barely played in the last year. And for that reason, and he wants to go, all of those factors combine to make him that amount of money. I know that there are other teams like Liverpool and Chelsea that get very good fees for their players. I understand that. It's frustrating. Arsenal's reputation at selling also comes into this. But a goalkeeper with one year left wants to go, has barely played um, and doesn't have bundles of interest from lots of teams either that are willing to pay anything more than that um, means that that's what he's going to go for. Um, so there you go. Uh, Dad says, Tom, any idea who that mystery midfielder is? No, uh, honestly, you know, we can all speculate about whether it was Ruben Neves, about whether it was Sergei Milinkovic Savic, about whether it's someone else. But no, is the honest answer. We just don't know who that is. Freddie says, Did you hear about the Paqueta links? Apparently, he doesn't want to come to us. We reported on the Paqueta links a little while ago. I've not seen the report saying he doesn't want to come to us, but I haven't also seen anything that is, you know, concrete telling us that we are indeed going in for him. Um, let's go to Stephen who says, we went for these players and they have decided to go to other clubs for their own reasons, just like Jesus decided to come to us and not other clubs. What will always frustrate me about us or Arsenal being criticised, I say us because I'm an Arsenal fan, you know, what will frustrate me about Arsenal being criticised about either missing out on Rafinha or missing out on another transfer target is because we for so, 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 so long went for players that there weren't that much interest in from other teams. You know, when we signed Partey, he was the only player, we were the only really club that were looking to activate his release clause. And that was used as a stick to beat Arsenal. When we signed Alexandre Lacazette, we were the only team really to go and sign Alexandre Lacazette. So we didn't face competition. And that was a stick that was used to beat Arsenal. When we signed Ozil, when we signed Alexis, when we signed loads of big players, Abamier, Squadron Mustafi, Xhaka. Why was no one else in for these guys, people said? Why was no one else going for them? Arsenal need to go for players of quality. Arsenal need to go for players that other teams want. Well, we're doing that. But it doesn't mean that you're always going to win those races. And it is not worth criticising Arsenal for missing out on potential targets when we go for other players that other teams also want and we don't always win the race. Because the only way that Arsenal are going to get genuine quality into the club is by signing players that other teams want, like Jesus, like these profiles that we are trying to sign like Rafinha, like uh, Lissandro Martinez. Other teams want good players. So we can't criticise the club for signing players that no one else wanted and at the same time criticise players or criticise the club for trying to sign players that other teams want and not always getting them. That's 
such a hip, hypocritic and you know contradictory position to hold, and it does genuinely frustrate me. Uh, the robots will let you says Tom. It's because we've not been able to pit another club to a big ish signing. Uh, well, except Jesus, if you believe the rumours. And again, this is the thing: is that I would implore you, robots, to believe the rumours. And I ask you, do you? Because for me, that very much sounds like you're trying to undermine a opposition point of view by saying they're just rumours. It's not true. You know, it's just PR that other teams were interested. I can tell you for a fact that other teams like Chelsea, Juventus, Tottenham were interested in Gabriel Jesus. Real Madrid even held an interest in Gabriel Jesus. Arsenal won the race. He wanted to come to Arsenal. We convinced him. And so therefore, you know, there's just no argument. Arsenal are trying to sign players that other teams also want, and that is a good thing. But it does mean that we're not always going to win the race. And that's not something to be critical of because until we get back into the Champions League, we aren't going to be going for these players. I had an actual debate with a former Arsenal player the other day about this idea that, yes, I'd love to be linked with players linked that, that are in the Champions League and that want to play Champions League football. I'd love to be in for those. But the reality for Arsenal is, is they aren't in the Champions League yet. They nearly were, but we're not. And so we need to go for players that are going to improve us. We need to take that next step next season and we have to qualify for the Champions League. We have to. It is a minimum expectation for me next season. We have to qualify for the Champions League. If we don't, there are going to be serious, serious questions about where we're going and what we're doing. Um, and that will fall on the coach. We have to qualify for the Champions League next season. Uh, there would have to be quite a monumental reason for us not doing it because we have to take that next step and progress. Um, but yeah, it's a frustration for me that even now when Arsenal are doing things that we have called and cried out for for so long that they then still get criticised for it. I just feel like some people aren't going to be very happy uh, ever. And that's kind of the situation. And says, do you think the pool of players of potentially great players are so small that the top clubs will be going for the same players? Uh, what can Arsenal do to get these over the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool? Uh, the answer to your first question, yes, the pool of very, very good players are very small. It is, you know, to be at the absolute top level of the game, it is the 1% of the 1% of the 1%, which means that you have a very small group of players to choose from, which is why Arsenal in the last few years have tried to sign players that can develop into that small percentage, that small pool. Players like Tommy Asu and Gabriel and White and, uh, and Erdegaard and now Fabio Vieira, Jesus, I feel, is, is so close to that very world-class pool of players. You know, um, very, very close indeed. We've signed players like Partey and Jesus because we looked at them as players that could be transformative for the team um, around these guys that could develop. In answer to your second question, what can we do? The answer is, <laughs> the answer is pay money, firstly. You've got to pay the money if you want these good players. You've got to try and out-compete others in the market. The second is you've got to convince them of the project. And I know that people don't like the word, but yes, the process, we have to convince them of that, that we are going in the right way. And Jesus certainly bought into that. And you can read his interview of Goal where he talks about that. Um, and thirdly, we probably need Champions League football, which we don't have right now. Um, and we need to be able to offer that as well. So that's that's kind of the issue that we're in. Uh, Wayne says, are there any uh, decent left-backs in mind? I think that was, when we talk about this, we need to talk about players that can play centre-back and left-back. I look at someone like Gvardio or RB Leipzig as a potential player that can play centre-back and left-back. Maybe that's someone that Arsenal should be looking to as a potential target instead of Lissandro Martinez. I would probably look to someone like him. Um Mud says, it definitely doesn't feel like eight months of work has gone into this window. So far, there is time left before the season starts. I disagree with that because it's the first time Arsenal have spent the amount of money that they've spent the uh, more than a month before the season started, bringing in four players, of course. And we have clear targets. You know, we wanted Rafinha, we've wanted Tillemans and another player clearly in the midfield. We wanted Vieira and Jesus. We wanted to renew Eddie and Ketia's contract. We want to bring Saliba back. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I think that there's been planning going into clubs, uh, into the club for a long time. Um, and we're seeing the benefit of that with some early business. 
and there is plenty of time remaining before the season starts. But we need to do that. And, you know, until that point comes, I will continue to be patient. But at the point that we start the season and we've, if we've not got the players in, that is when I will be critical. That is when I will be asking the questions. Some people say, well, that's too late to ask questions. Well, that's just not me, I'm afraid, guys. You know, I'm a reflective person. I'm not a reactionary person anymore. Um, I'll reflect and choose my choice of decision on that based upon when the season starts and what we've done. Until there is, if there is still time to get business done, I will be open to waiting for that. Um, Wesbird says, as you've said many a time, in your humble but accurate opinion, uh, that unfortunately it takes time to sign players and we as fans have to be patient as frustrating as that may be. Uh, let's go to Manu who says, have some faith, people. Our project has got massive pulling power, and believe it or not, it's facts. Uh, we will sign the big names if we feel like they will fit the team. Uh, equally different says, way too late. And I do struggle with this still because I feel like Arsenal fans have high... It's a, it's a massive hyperbole, you know, how late Arsenal did their business. You know, William was signed in August, I think. And I know the season started late, but it's still a month before the season started around this time. Ben White was signed the weekend before the season started. And that was one of our earlier pieces of business in 2021. If you go back and back and back, Partey, Tierney signed late. David Luiz signed late. You know, Arsenal's business that they did early, there isn't too many examples. But there is a lot of examples this summer. And yet, for some reason, there's still this block that we have got to appreciate um, what we are doing now, uh, indeed. Uh, let's go to Sam, who says it's a massive team building exercise to have uh, the new signings in the US. Massive opportunity lost. Is it lost, Sam? Jesus, Vieira, Marquinhos, Turner, four players in ready for the, the tour. It also doesn't mean that a player can't be signed and join up. You know, it's not a case of you missed the plane, you don't go to the US. No, that's not how it works. They're there for a period of time. If we sign a player whilst they are on the tour, they will fly out and join them on the tour. Um, and so that's not a missed opportunity. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's go to uh, Nikki, who says, Edu has discussed two more signings. Uh, apparently, one of them looks to be Martinez, an alternative. With Marquinhos, an option, is it more likely that the second option is a centre midfielder? Absolutely. I, it might it'd be my prediction. I think Arsenal will sign two more players. I think it'll be a midfielder. I think it'll be a versatile defender. I think that the wide position would be a bonus at this point for Arsenal. It's not a bonus in the reality of a summer. It should have been a, one of the priorities, in my view. Not as high as centre mid or not as high as, as the versatile defender position. But certainly the wide forward role should have been um, uh, an area I wanted. But I think it will now be seen as a bit of a bonus if Arsenal end up getting it done. Um, let's let's go into the chat box a little bit more. I've got a little bit more time to answer some more of your questions. Let's go to... Um, I'm just unfortunately having to deal with some people in the chat box that seem to just not get the message. Uh, Vishal says, playing the devil's advocate here, but we may lose out on targets uh, the later it gets, and we may not have space to negotiate, even if it's our plan B. Absolutely fine for Shout to play doubles advocate, and time is ticking. You know, the clock is ticking down constantly, constantly ticking down. And I understand the frustration that there is. A, obviously, with all the news that bleats out every single day, um, that we want to see a good update, and we're so attached to it, and we're so tuned in, and you watch shows by idiots that do shows every day on Arsenal transfers me <laughs> uh, and you want to hear more positive news i get that but we you know we just have to we just have to be that little bit more patient there's still plenty of time left to do more business this window uh wayne says um they done nothing in january though tom so done early uh now isn't actually early really is it um i mean yes it absolutely wayne it's a different window it's a different transfer window. It's a different season. It's a different budget. It's a different time. It's a different context. Absolutely, it's early because it's a different transfer window, mate. You can't go, the transfer window starts in January and goes all the way through to June, July, August. No, it doesn't work that way. It's, it is early. It is early business that we've done during this transfer window. 
Uh, let's go to C, who says, Arsenal are going around in circles, Tom. Top players require high spending and wages. We don't do that. Other teams are still strengthening as well, and we need to have a better window than them. Um, we Obviously, we have a good foundation as well that we're building from, but I don't think we're going around in circles at all. They do require high spending and wages. That's why one of the signings we've made, we spent big on and made him the highest paid player at the club. So it's not like Arsenal don't do that, is it? Um, as you've quoted, we don't do that. One of the signings we've made, we spent one of our biggest transfer fees on and made him the highest paid player at the club. So factually, I'm sorry, but that isn't true. Isn't true at all. Uh, Riddler says, Lille have rejected Arsenal's bid. Idon is 100% staying at Lille for another year. We talked about that earlier on. Uh, let's go to... <laughs> Mikey says, Tom, how do you deal with all these silly questions? Look, there is such thing as silly questions. And usually if they're, you know if they are genuinely silly and they aren't getting the hint or if they are just being trolls, they're not welcome. You know, we don't deal with trolls in the chat box. Is that, I want a, I want a constructive environment for you guys to enjoy these shows in. And so we don't deal with that, but not all questions are silly. Some are genuine. Some just don't agree with my point of view and that's fine. You know, you can have a different point of view. You can ask questions, but I will disagree and I will try to explain to the best of my ability why I disagree. And I hope that that is appreciated. Um, unlike these kind of comments from Warren delusional, this is such a problem in the Arsenal fan base. Calling people's opinions, quote unquote, delusional is one disrespectful because it offers nothing uh, in regards to kind of, you know, an opposite point of view at all. It doesn't explain anything. You know, it just makes people look silly. <laughs> it just makes people look really, really silly. You know, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there, Warren, but, uh, you know, just think about being respectful in disagreeing with someone's point of view you can't manage that there are other places you can go to watch arsenal content um let's go to uh Ayat, who says would mateus nunez be a good surprise center mid he would he's a fantastic player i think chelsea are one of the teams that are looking at him at the moment which makes it very difficult for arsenal to compete of course um chelsea are just chelsea are a bit of a bull in a china shop at the uh in the transfer window this year because i think todd bowley's trying to make a statement you know arsenal were linked with rafinha man united were linked with de jong Ronaldo, of course, I think he wants to make statements and it's a bit of a bull in the china shop scenario uh, right now. Uh, let's go to... Let's... Honestly, people can do one. Trying to justify some of the idiots. Uh, let's go to Sam, who says, if Xhaka and or Elneny have starting spots in the midfield, we won't achieve our targets. Um, look, if they are the starters next season, Xhaka and Elneny, then of course... We've not done enough to progress the midfield, Sam. I'm not going to disagree with you. We absolutely need to progress the midfield. If the same three players that started for us last season in the midfield start next season, we've not done enough in the window to progress. But it's July 8th and we've got a month till the season starts, just under. I will wait until the season starts before I go, we haven't done enough to strengthen the midfield because guess what? On the 28th of July, we could end up signing a great midfielder. So I'm not going to sit here now you know, I'm not going to sit here now and turn around and say that it's ridiculous and that we I can't believe we've not done this, that we've got all this time left and we, you know, the time's ticking. There's no time left. It's too late. It's not too late at all. It is not too late at all to get good players in to the club. Um, let's go to see who's responding to what I said earlier. Jesus Tom is the highest paid player. However, we will spend the same amount on other areas. That's what top four teams are doing. Question, did we finish in the top four? No. That affected the way in which we were able to spend money next season. Do we want to get into the top four? Yes. But there are so many other teams that also want to be there. It is not a closed circuit. It is not just Arsenal. You know, we have to compete with these other teams that have got more money, that have been in the Champions League more recently than us. We've got to be smart with the way we do our business. But just a second ago, see, saying that Arsenal don't do that, quoting you, was wrong because clearly that happens with Jesus and it is an example of that. We've bid for Rafinha. We tried to get him. Unfortunately, we weren't willing to go to the level of money that Chelsea and seemingly Barcelona were willing to go for for the player. And that's fine because there are other areas that I would rather see that money that those clubs are willing to spend on Rafinha spent on midfield spent on defence. We're trying to get some good players in those positions. There is time left. Now is not the time to lose your heads. It's just not the time at all. It's just not the time to lose your head whatsoever. 
Um, let's go to uh, scroll up and see if we can find any more. Um, and he says, Tom, do you think we will be outbid on Martinez? I'm not feeling great about the Martinez situation. You know, I'll be very, very sure. I'm not feeling good uh, about it. Uh, I'm not feeling confident that we'll get him. Uh, let's go to uh, Mo who says, mate, I always 99% agree with you unless when you don't like my questions. <laughs> Honestly, everyone has their own opinions. And in the end, Arsenal will do what they can in this window and we will support. Mo, you don't have to agree with me. You know, it's this is it's an open forum. And as long as you're respectful and as long as, you know, you're, you're, you're being respectful with what you're putting into the chat box, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. Uh, Lucas says, when am I going to buy the uh, Black Arsenal away kit? When I can. You know, I, I know that everyone has it other than everyone in England and the UK, clearly. like Everyone in Canada, in Ireland, in the United States, in Asia. It's been released pretty much everywhere other than where Arsenal are, which is obviously kind of weird. But um, yeah, as soon as I can, I will be getting the Black away kit. Trust me, it's one of the nicest kits I have ever seen. Um, I will be absolutely getting it. Knuckles... I won't bring politics into the conversation, um, but you, it's fair to say that I'm I'm happy. Uh, let's go to um, uh, King says, good morning, Tom. Uh, the home shirt is growing on me. Thanks, mate. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it is. I wasn't too keen on it at the start, but it is definitely, definitely growing on me. That's for sure. Um, let's wrap things up there. I'm going to be live over on the Arsenal way at 10 a.m. Thank you so much for everybody that's tuned in to today's show. As always, 99% of you have been fantastic. Um, do drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel if you are new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. Thank you, uh, as always, for helping us reach 20,000 subscribers on the Arsenal way, where, as I say, I'll be live over there at, uh, at, at 10. No, I won't be live at 10. I don't start till 12. Someone will be live at 10. Not me. <laughs> Someone will be live at 10, but uh, I won't be on till 12. But as I said, just to quickly highlight again, and let me scroll back through uh, my PowerPoint because I want you guys to get involved with today's video. There's a chance for you to get uh, your Twitter feeds and stuff like that shown up. Uh, I'm going to be running the live blog for the Nuremberg uh, Arsenal game uh, over uh, on football.london and I want you guys to feature in the live blog. So uh, tweet your previews, tweet your reactions, tweet videos of your feelings about the game, about pre-season, about uh, surprises that we could see, about youth players, about transfers that you want to see coming in. Um, tweet them using the hashtag FLArsenal, uh, and I'll be live over there at 12.30 on the live blog uh, and hopefully uh, inputting your thoughts and feelings into that. Dan, in terms of a preview, it's a preseason game. I don't really know what to expect from it. I'm just looking forward to seeing some good football and I'm looking forward to seeing our new boys play as well. So there you go. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you uh, later on this evening at 8 p.m. for a video reaction on here of the preseason game that's taking place at 4.30 UK time, 5.30 German time. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and as always, up the Arsenal.